that I um, wanted to share this morning with the congregation. And I kind of was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth okay. on what I wanted to share. And uh, I think I'm going to stick with Romans 8.1, or I was going to be. You know, a lot of, a lot of Christian men and um, Christian women, I hear them say, you know, I, I love the Lord. And, uh, and uh, God is important to me. And, uh, and I know that Jesus died on the cross for me. And all those things that we, we tell ourselves as Christian men and women. And, um, but sometimes I watch a man's life and I don't, I don't see it, even though they say they live in it. You know what I mean? It's like, a, it's like two lives. And I, I believe that a lot of Christians, not a lot, I believe that there are Christians out there who believe that the Holy Spirit does not live in them. I believe that. I believe they believe that Jesus did die for them and God loves them, but I don't think they truly understand that that without sin, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And we walk our lives every day living, not knowing that that's a reality after we accept Christ. And because of it, I think a lot of Christians, well, once again, not a lot of Christians, but maybe a lot, they don't, they don't have the full fulfillment of who Christ can be in their lives because of that one little lack of understanding of what happened at Calvary and who Jesus promised he would send us. So I just want to read part of this 8 through maybe verse 5 only. If you will, bear with me. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free Amen. from the law of sin and, death. and what does it say there? And what? Yeah. Death. Set us free from the laws of sin and death. See? I believe that I have a new life in Christ. A new birth in Christ. October 2nd, 2010 is a new birth in my life because I believe that once I accepted Jesus as my Savior, <laughs> I am now dead the death and all that sin is I'm dead to that because of what the Holy Spirit lives, lives inside me. See, a lot of Christians I, I see them and I just want to reach out and hug them and say do you understand that, that you, you're not just saved Christ didn't just save you on the cross but he sent you the great counselor he sent you the Holy Spirit that lives inside you to help comfort you help take care of you help, to help guide you, you know, to help make the right decisions avoid the bad decisions Set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, for what the law was powerless to do, and that it was weakened by sinful what? Nature, by us, by man. It was weakened from Adam and Eve. God did by sending his only son in the likeness of sinful man. To be what? A sin offering. And that's another thing. Sometimes Christians, we don't understand that Christ paid the price as an offering, a sacrifice for our sins. And so we can so and so he condemned sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. What is that righteousness, that fully righteous of the law in the meaning of it? We're going to get there in just a second. Who do, not, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the what? The spirit. See? That's that completion that Christ promised us. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what is what? Natural desire. Ready? But those who live according to but the Spirit have their minds set on what? On what? What does it say there? On what the Spirit desires. See that? And where does the Spirit live? 
right here in the Holy of Holies. So how do I know as a Christian man, how do I know to live the way that I'm supposed to live with the Holy Spirit living in me? Is it watching a preacher on TV? Is it coming here and listening to someone share the gospel with you? Is it listening to spiritual songs when you drive in the car? Those might play a small, small part. But the true part of how to know to live our lives with the Holy Spirit is, is right here. God's Word. Spending a little bit of time each day and reading it. But not just reading it, but applying it to our lives. And that will change how we see things. That will change how we live. And we can truly live in that, that true understanding what actually took place at Calvary. See? Jesus came and died to forgive us of our sins. He rose on the third grave, third day. When he rose on the third day, what did he leave? See, the sinful nature of the old law, when Christ died on the cross, he went to the grave. And for three days, he was there. And when he rose on the third day, all of that sin and all that ugliness that he died for, he left in the death for us. His death and resurrection was the forgiveness of sin and to, and to take us out of death. That's what he did. So how do we know as Christian men and women that we need to live a certain way? Right here. I've said it before, you will never hear, if you do, build a correction. You will never hear anyone sharing the gospel in this church to tell you to close your Bible and listen to what Alana tells you. Why? Because it's not right. This is God's work, and it's going to touch you a little differently, Eddie, than it touches me, depending on what we're going through. But we're not going to know how it touches us and how it directs our Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit within us unless we do what with it? We pick it up, we read it, and then we take what we read, and we apply that to our lives. Then in that time, in that moment, we'll truly understand what direction we need to live in. But let's not take what happened at Calvary for granted. You know? Let's not. And But the thing is, is let's accept all the benefits of Calvary in our lives. Right? Let's not take it for granted. Oh, yeah, I'm safe. I can do whatever I want. No problem. Why? Because Jesus died for my sins. So the sins that I've already done, my pastor said, you know what my pastor told me? The sins I've already done, the sins I'm going to do, and sins I haven't even thought of yet to do, that I'm going to do, are all forgiven. So why, why even hold myself accountable to any of it? How messed up is that life thinking? No, we, 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 we cut things out of our lives that we shouldn't be doing anymore based upon Scripture and what Scripture, how Scripture tells us to live our lives. But most importantly, guys, I honestly believe that we ought to stay focused on this huge thing in our, as, as a part of our Christian walk. We are no longer not known to Christ. Once we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, he now calls us brother. And we do sit at the right hand of the Heavenly Father with him right now. Let's not nasty up our, the Holy Spirit that lives in us by doing things that we know we shouldn't be doing. And, and also by not doing things we know we should be doing. You understand? Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We just ask that, Father, you would just bless us, Father, in such a way. Lord, allow me every day to renew every morning knowing that the Holy Spirit lives in me. Allow me to live my life that way. So when I make a decision to do something, and I see something, and I, or I, before I say something, or whatever it is in my, in my life, Allow me to always realize that I am a reflection of who King Jesus is. Let me be a positive reflection in people's lives so they can then see who King Jesus can be in their lives. That's my prayer. I pray in King Jesus' name. Amen. Putting together this morning's meditation, when the Lord, I, I was telling the Lord, Lord, I'm careful on how people see me. I'm careful on how I live my life. How people view me, how this me, me, people see me, see me, see me. You know what he said? But that's not important. He said, How do you see yourself when you're with me and not with me? That's important. 
Don't worry about the other. Correct this first, and the rest of it will follow. How do you see yourself when you're with him or not with him? That's the important thing, because then your relationship with him can become pure. And I'm like, wow. I'm always worried about how, what others will see and how I'm living my life and what I'm doing. And reality is, he's saying, see how you're living your life with me. And your, where is your heart? Where is your want? Where is the time you're spending with me? And the rest of it will follow. In other words, he's saying, don't worry about how the world sees you. Worry how you see yourself with me. Make that right change. While they're eating, Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to the disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This, this is my blood. This is the new covenant right here. This is what we're talking about right here. This, this, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. King Jesus, thank you for holding up to your promise that you would send to us the great counsel. You would send to us the Holy Spirit to live in us. Thank you for holding up to that. I thank you for it in my life because without it right now, there's sometimes Thank you that you've given me the Holy Spirit that lives in me through the blood that was shed on the cross. So that I can experience you in a very close and intimate relationship as my true king, as my brother, 